harvesting of human fetuses, of hybrid fetuses, is what we, what we should say. And so what we have here is this union between the fallen angel, the mortal woman, as the newspaper said, the hybrid fetus, or the Nephilim. Now, the other interesting thing about this is, is that the, the fact that people do not remember what actually happened. And the way they remember is they are put under hypnosis. This article goes on and talks about uh, an expert in, in this field. It says, in the case of the abductees, a leader in the field is David Jacobs, a Temple University history professor who hypnotizes abductees and tries to capture their real mem uh, memories. So what happens is these people are abducted by UFOs. They forget everything. They come back and they wake up and they know they're missing hours, days, weeks of their lives. <clears throat> and they say, well, what happened? So they are, they are, uh, they are put under hypnosis. And under hypnosis, they recall all of these things. Now we know, and we could also represent, uh, we could also recommend some good books on this subject as well. Uh, <clears throat> that hypnosis empties the mind and opens the mind to demonic suggestion and demonic possession. So we, so hypnosis is very dangerous, and it is an occult tactic. It's been uh, adopted by the psych uh, psychological community of today, but it is not a good thing and a person should never allow themselves to be hypnotized because you're opening yourself up <clears throat> to demonic suggestion. So, what, what has happened here, they are abducted by fallen angels. The fallen angels will impregnate or will, or will harvest the fetus that comes from such a union and they are keeping these fetuses or keeping these children, as it were, for a future time. Now, if in fact, if in fact we are seeing a repeat of what happened in Genesis chapter 9, we're seeing the exact words of Jesus Christ being fulfilled here by this activity. We're seeing that when Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, or so shall the days of the coming of the Son of Man be. We are seeing that the Nephilim are being are being birthed and brought up and prepared for their coming back to earth or a return of this group of the old ones, the mighty men which were old, or the Nephilim to rule the world during the time of the tribulation. And this is just another aspect of the end times that we live in, we live in today, and, and it tells us that we need to watch and we need to be aware of what's going on. If we were to read the rest of, uh, of Matthew chapter 24, uh, it, it goes on to talk about, after verse 39, then shall two be in the field and one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding in the mill, one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know what not you know not what hour your Lord cometh. But know this that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye ready, for as in such hours you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now we said earlier that this passage is written to Jews. It is written about the seven year tribulation period. It is not written to the church. It is not written about the rapture of the church verses 40 and 41 where it talks about two shall be in the field, one shall be taken and the other left. We said before that at the end of the seven year tribulation period is the second coming of Jesus Christ when Jesus comes to the earth and sets up his millennial kingdom for 1,000 years. God here in the seven year tribulation period is once again dealing with Israel. For the space here that the church has been in existence, Israel has been set aside. The, uh, the children of Israel at the crucifixion of Christ told Pilate, let, it, let this man's blood be upon us and upon our children. We're told in the book of Hosea that the children of Israel shall uh, be many days without a king, without a prince, 
without an ephod, but shall come back into their land in the latter days. What has happened here, during this church age, since the time of the crucifixion of Christ, Israel has been set aside, and they've got exactly what they asked for. The blood of Christ has been upon them and upon their children. But now God again, in this seven-year period, begins again to deal with Israel. And this, the end of the seven-year period, where one is taken and the other is left, we know that two-thirds of Israel during this time, two-thirds of the Jews worldwide, will not survive this seven-year period. The Bible tells us in the book of Zechariah that one-third of Israel will be saved to enter into the kingdom. Two-thirds will not survive. And when you're seeing Matthew chapter 24, do not get confused that this is the rapture of the church. But rather, this is the two that are in the field, one taken and the other left. The person that's left at the end of this period, what are, they going to, what are they going to do? They're going to enter into the Millennial Kingdom. The one taken will be taken for judgment, basically executed, and will not enter the Millennial Kingdom. So that's what we have to understand, and that's what we have to keep in perspective. But we see that the days of Noah will be as this period of time, and at the end of this time, Jesus Christ will return again, and will slaughter the armies of the Antichrist, or the beast as he is called, at Armageddon, and in this period, and then the kingdom that has been promised to Israel for so long will be set up. Satan during this time will be bound and chained for a thousand years, and, uh, and so the long promised kingdom will finally come upon the earth. But our lesson today, and what we really want to get out of this, is that, is that the word of God has the answers. There are a lot of questions in this world. There are a lot of questions that are that are of extraterrestrial origin. There are a lot of questions that we have about our personal relationships with each other. But the things that, the real spooky things, ghosts, demons, those types of things that, that sometimes that we just don't seem to have the answers to, we have to realize that if we take the Bible literally, and we let scripture interpret other scripture, God has given us the answers to so many things that we just sort of bleep over when we read the Bible too fast or don't read the Bible uh, at all. And we saw here, all the way back in Genesis chapter 6, when you went over to 1 Peter, 2 Peter, and the book of Jude, the Bible had the explanation that God had given us. And then that opens up that opens up so many things and the answers to so many questions that exist in that, quote, paranormal, paranormal world that, uh, that people like to talk about. But the Bible has the answers. It also says in Genesis chapter 6, and one thing we didn't uh, spend a lot of time talking about, it says, but there were giants in the earth in those days and after that. So though this problem may not be near as prolific as it was at the time of Noah, there may be uh, children of mortals and fallen angels even walking around today. There may be a number, a limited number of Nephilim still on the earth. And ghosts and, and uh, disembodied spirits could be rather recent additions to the spiritual world because of Nephilim that have died with no place for their spirit to go. So there are a lot of questions that are answered by looking at the Bible and seeing what the Bible has to tell us. But the biggest question that we always need to answer is one of our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And we all need to be ready, not for the second coming of Christ, but we need to get ready for the rapture of the church that will occur prior to this time. Because if you have heard the gospel and are still alive going into this seven year period, the prospects for your life are very, very grim. And the prospect for your eternal destiny are also very, very grim. And today is the day of salvation. We're not to wait. We're not to let the rapture of the church sneak up, and up, sneak up on upon us as a thief, and we're not to be ready. We should be ready for the rapture just as when Jesus was talking to the disciples and speaking to Jews in general, they're to be ready for the kingdom. We're, to, as the members of the church, are to be ready for the rapture of the church. And we're going to turn over one more place, and we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, because we want to just kind of end this on a note.